Newfoundland, which is where uh, both of our campuses are located, the province in Canada. Um, Newfoundland itself is on the eastern coast, so it is an island. Um, so the, the, that's over on the, the St. John side. Grenfell campus, much more uh, smaller, much more rural. Uh, there's only about 1,400 students there uh, in the city of 20,000. That said, both campuses do offer uh, a number of uh, a number of amazing courses for you. Um, a few, just to give kind of a, a quick overview of the programming, uh, we have courses in pretty much every uh, every major area that you can imagine. All the sciences. Uh, from chemistry, bio, physics, biomedical, uh, you name it, uh, you know, it's all there, uh, as well as a med school that you can do after you finish your undergrad uh, through the St. John's campus. Uh, um, environmental science in particular is, uh, is a popular choice at the Grenfell campus. Uh, within the arts, we have, uh, again, you know, all the major ones, English history, sociology, anthropology, social cultural studies, uh, all everything you can imagine. Uh, psychology can actually be done as either an art or a science. So psychology is a particularly popular choice, especially with students in India. Uh, so that's uh, another one that you can uh, that you can access as both. Um, beyond that, we have uh, the fine arts program through our Grenfell campus, which uh, includes both theater and visual arts. Uh, and then within theater, you also have uh, two subdivisions of acting and stagecraft. So that would be, for example, if you wanted to become a stage manager, a uh, prop designer, or anything the, the more behind the scenes sort of work with um with the with the uh, theater side um beyond that there's also nursing nursing is a popular choice engineering is one of our most popular programs uh, now most of our programs are four years i will note that engineering is actually a five-year program uh because there is um, a mandatory co-op aspect so you do have to do five years for engineering however when you graduate from the engineering program you are a fully certified engineer uh and it's it's quite easy to find work as an engineer as you can imagine uh, it's a very very high demand field right now um the, beyond that, there's also human kinetics and recreation through the St. John's campus. Uh, and then I'm sure, you know, the, the, I, I could list all the programs, but the, there's over 100 of them. So, you know, I'd, I'd be going for quite some time. Um, effectively, you know, the, with the exception of uh, veterinary school, we, we have most of the major programs that, uh, that people tend to look for. So there, there's a lot of options there. Um, in terms of price point, we do have the lowest tuition in Canada right now, 11,460 Canadian dollars per year. Um, that's based off of 10 courses full time. Uh, so five courses from September to December and then five courses from January to April. Uh, that's our two main semesters. And then of course we also have the spring semester. Most students don't tend to study during the spring semester, and if they do, they, uh, they usually study uh, part-time as opposed to full-time. Uh, the other thing with the spring semester is the, really the only students who, who usually do full-time during that period are the uh, engineering students, because they'll often do co-ops or work terms during that time. Um, Factoring in everything, your tuition, your meal plan, your residence, your health insurance, books, supplies, day-to-day -day living, everything all together. Uh, the price tag, usually we, we tell students to, they can expect to spend between 19 and 23,000 Canadian dollars per year. Uh, again, that would factor in the previously mentioned 11,460 uh, for tuition. So that is per year uh, for a four-year degree uh, that works out um, to about somewhere around 60,000, I believe, if my, or, or uh, between 60 and 80,000, if my math is good. I don't know that if my math is not, I'm a history student, not a math student. I, uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, multiplied by four for your, your total, um, your total cost. Uh, to give a little bit more information about the locations, uh, like I said, we do have two main campuses. We have St. John's and Grenfell. St. John's is a bit more urban, like I said, 100,000 people. Uh, everything is, you know, within five to ten minutes of the campus itself. Uh, all the buildings on campus are connected by a series of tunnels, so you can theoretically go to your classroom, the library, the meal hall, wherever you need to go, and never even have to go outside. Uh, so it's, it's uh, very accessible as a campus. And if you can't find it on campus, very likely that you'll find it, uh, like I said, within five to 10 minutes walking distance. Uh, the only place that you'll really need to take any major public transport to would be the downtown area. And even that, you know, it's, it's a very short bus ride to get there. It's so very, very convenient. Um, Grenfell, like I said, much, much smaller. It's located in Cornerbrook, only 20,000 people in the city. Uh, that said, everything is still, uh, you know, all, all your basic amenities are here. Obviously, if, you know, it is going to be significantly smaller than, uh, you 
you know, maybe the typical city that uh, you're probably used to. Uh, but, you know, it is still a very beautiful area, especially if you're into uh, outdoor activities, nature. Uh, we do have a national park about two hours away from the city that uh, is among the most beautiful places in the world. If you do a quick Google search for Gross Moore, G-R-O-S-M-O-R-N-E, um, you'll find some of the most beautiful scenery, uh, I, I would say, on the planet myself. Uh, so it's a, an amazing area. I actually went this weekend. Um, really great area if you're into outdoor activities like skiing, snowboarding, hiking. Uh, you know, you, you can experience a lot of different uh, places like that here. Uh, Climate-wise, it is quite cold. It is Canada. It's to be expected. Uh, so you're looking at uh, all four seasons from uh, spring, summer, winter, and fall. Um, you know, the, the way the way I kind of uh, describe it to students, Newfoundland is like four different places throughout the four different seasons. Uh, you can expect to see a fully different environment uh, in each season. Um, right now, we're in kind of late winter, early spring. So temperatures are still a little bit low. They're usually in the negative. Uh, that said, this week coming up, the forecast is showing for temperature ranges between five degrees and 15 degrees. Um, that can expect to continue climbing up until uh, about June, which is when summer officially starts. Uh, from summer, we usually have temperatures of uh, you know, anywhere from 18 to 30 degrees. Uh, fall, it tends to get a little bit lower. You know, you're on the higher end. You may still get a day or two of 25, 26, uh, but it will go down to, um, you know, maybe 10, 8 degrees. Uh, winter, winter is quite cold, so a lot of students, uh, you know, do have a little bit of trouble adapting to winter uh, because temperatures are generally in the negative. Uh, that said, Newfoundland is considerably warmer than most of the rest of Canada. Um, our average daily temperature in the winter is between minus 10 and zero degrees, whereas in other places it may be between minus 20 and zero. Our temperature does go that low, however, our extreme tends to be much higher. Um, our, our lowest low is about minus 20. In uh, places like Ontario or like uh, central Canada, you're looking at maybe temperatures as low as minus 40. Uh, so, you know, it, we, we do, it is considerably warmer with us than, than um, you know, the more inland cities. Uh, that said, the other thing I always tell students is that there's no such thing as bad weather or bad climate, just bad clothing. As long as you're prepared for dealing with that weather, then, um, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be equipped to, to, you know, not only survive it, but also thrive in it. Um, Pretty much the um, <clears throat> like the, the school does offer uh, a number of supports for students adapting to winter. Uh, for example, at the Grenville campus, we do have uh, what we call the free store. The free store is operated through our student housing uh, department. And what it is, is there's a one residence wing with a special room. Students who are leaving uh, can just drop off anything that they don't want or that they don't need anymore, whether it's school supplies, books, um, clothing, kitchen supplies anything of that sort, uh, and, and winter clothing is kind of the big one that most people tend to go for here. They'll drop off their winter clothing, and then next semester when new students come in, they can take it for free. There's no charge, no paperwork, nothing. You just go in. It's just a service that we offer for students. Uh, similar services can be found at St. John's. And if you can't find something in your size at the free store, then the, uh, there, there is a thrift store off campus. You can find winter clothing for less than $10 used. So it's it's a fantastic opportunity. There's lots of services and, and supports that you can use. Uh, in addition to that, we do have educational services, uh, different programming to help you through both international student, uh, student services and student housing uh, that can teach you, you know, some of the things that maybe you don't really know about winter, like what kind of clothing should I wear? Uh, how can I stay safe in winter? How can I walk uh, in snow or on ice? Those sorts of things. Um, a lot of people don't really think about those when they, they consider, okay, what's it like to live in Canada? And these kind of little educational seminars and talks can really uh, help you kind of adapt to that. Um, so that's a, just a little bit about the climate. Um, Mr. Clary, is there anything else that you can think of that I, I could add to this? Well, just tell me more about the Grenfell campus courses. Yeah, sure. Uh, so Grenfell, like I said, the Grenfell campus is the, the smaller of the two campuses. Uh, that said, uh, it is the campus that I mainly represent. Um, so we don't have engineering like the St. John's campus. Uh, however, we do offer the first year of engineering. So for students who are maybe intimidated by, uh, for example, the um, you know large class sizes of a, a larger institution, uh, you can do your first year with us at Grenfell. Uh, so St. John's, your first year, you're probably looking at class sizes of anywhere from 100 to 200 people. At Grenfell, uh, for your first year sciences, uh, you're maybe looking at class sizes of 30 to 35 at most. 
Um, the only exception there would be first year math, which does tend to go up to about 70 or 80, but you know, your other sciences, you do have much smaller class sizes. Uh, and what smaller class sizes mean is that you get closer one-to-one -one attention from your professors. Uh, so for first year courses, you are looking at an average size of about 30 students. However, um, once you get into your second, third, and fourth year uh, engineering side, you are looking at significantly smaller class sizes. Even factoring in the larger first year courses, our average class size at Grenfell is between 12 and 15 students per, uh, per instructor. So to give you an example from my own degree, uh, like I said, I did history at Grenfell. Uh, our, my, my smallest class size uh, was four students. And uh, what that meant is that I was on a first name basis with my professor, with every one of my classmates. Everyone in the program knew each other really, really well. Uh, I still regularly get invited by professors to come over for um, like dinners for the history department, for example. Um, you know, like, like the professors are very uh, student focused at Grenfell because of that small class size and because of that individualized attention we get. Um, Beyond the first year engineering course, uh, like I mentioned, there is um, the fine arts program, which is exclusive to the Grenfell campus. Environmental science uh, is exclusive to the, uh, to the Grenfell campus. Uh, in addition to environmental science within that, pro that stream, there is also the option to do a uh, Bachelor of Resource Management instead of um, or, or in natural resources as opposed to environmental science. So it's a little bit more of a balance between sciences and arts. Uh, so it is a great opportunity there. Uh, the nursing school at Grenfell, fantastic. Um, as I mentioned, the arts and sciences, you do have your, your main um, you know, your main, your main cores of uh, the lab sciences and then the various arts, those are all great opportunities. Uh, and again, regardless of which program you're in, you are looking at that small class size. Uh, so you, you, know, you, you can use that as uh, kind of an advantage with us. Tell me about, more about the BBA program, which is very, very popular in, within uh, Indian students. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. Oh my gosh. Uh, I completely missed the, the business program. Yeah. So business is offered at both campuses. Uh, business in particular at Grenfell is uh, a very popular choice, especially for students in India and Bangladesh. Uh, a lot of business programs do require math for entry. Uh, and that is true of our St. John's campus. However, with our Grenfell campus, we do not require math uh, for entry. So just, um, I, I should talk a little bit about our, our entry requirements for general studies. Uh, if you want to apply, to study at Mund, regardless of your uh, what degree you're planning on, on pursuing, uh, you're required to have five courses in high school. Uh, normally, that would be English, math, a science, a language, or a social study, and then one more elective. Now, if your program doesn't require one of those courses, we can waive one of them. So for example, business does not require math. So if you don't have math and you want to pursue business, as long as you have the other four courses, we can skip that math requirement. We can, we can allow you entry into um, the business program. Um, St. John's, you will be required to, to study math to enter the business faculty. Uh, so if you, you know, let's say that you want to go to the St. John's campus, but you don't have math, cool. You can come to Grenfell for one year, uh, get your math requirements with us, and then transition out. Or what many people do, uh, we, we do get a number of students who, who plan on doing that, and they come to Grenfell and they say, you know what? I really like it here. I'm going to stay for the full four years, and, and that's what they end up doing. Um, so business, uh, again, four-year BBA program, uh, no math required for entry into the uh, Grenfell campus. Uh, there is a little bit of math required in the program. However, it's mostly logical math and uh, statistics as opposed to calculus. Like I said, I'm not a math person. That would scare me. Uh, if that scares you too, then you know what? Uh, great. You, you don't need to do that side of uh, that side of math when, uh, when you do business with Grenfell. Uh, St. John's, you will have to do a little bit of it, but Again, that's, uh, you know, that's if you choose to follow that route. Um, we, beyond that, um, yeah, the, the business faculty is, is fantastic. Business uh, as a first year course, like I said, it, it is one of those uh, bigger courses. You do tend to get classes of maybe 60 or 70 for first year business, but again, second year, third year and beyond, uh, that class size shrinks down considerably. Tell me about the fine art courses. Uh, sorry? Fine arts courses in Greenfield campus. The final courses? Fine arts. 
Oh, oh finance, finance, sorry. Um, so we don't actually offer a program strictly in finance. Uh, we do offer a minor in economics and uh, there is a, there are some finance courses uh, through the business faculty. Uh, now, I, I'll be fully honest, I don't have that information right off the top of my head because um, it's not offered as a, as a major as, as so much as it is um, like a, a, a smaller aspect of the, the BBA program through Ma. Uh, but if you just give me one moment, I can certainly uh, bring up like a, a course list. No problem. No problem. Yeah, just a moment now. I'm just having a little bit of trouble with the website. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. All right. So um, I'm just going to go through the uh, the list here. Uh, so in terms of courses uh, directly in finance, um, most of the like the first year courses will touch on it uh, a little bit uh because you know like i said the first year courses are often uh, designed to be overviews that provide just kind of a general look into all the different aspects of business from management finance to economics uh entrepreneurship all those different uh, areas uh that said uh once you get into your second year and beyond that's when you kind of look at um some of the more specific uh your, your courses will kind of zoom in on certain areas um, so one of the mandatory courses uh, as part of the core program, uh, we have Financial Accounting 1, uh, which introduces some of the core concepts of financial accounting uh, using the Canadian framework. Uh, going through the topics, uh, there's uh, general the nature of accounting, the accounting cycle, preparation of financial statements, balance sheets, income statements, uh, owner equity statements, statements of cash flow, all these different sorts of um, you know, uh, different documents that you, you would end up dealing with, uh, if, you know, as a business person or, or working in, um, whether it's your own business or, or a larger financial setting. Uh, there's managerial accounting. Uh, you have financial management one, which is a third year course uh, that goes into Canadian capital markets uh, with a focus on financial analysis and forecasting, uh, working with capital management, time value money, and uh, some financing options. Um, Going a little bit further, um, you have, that, that's just from the core. Um, among the electives, we have personal finance, so more um, individualized as opposed to big business um, finance. Uh, then we have intermediate accounting one and two, which are both uh, third level courses. Uh, financial management two, which is the sequel to uh, the one that I mentioned a few minutes ago. Um, and then there's uh, another course in investing at the fourth level, fourth year. Will tell me about the scholarship part. Yes. So we do offer scholarships, uh, entry scholarships between three and six thousand dollars for international students. Uh, now, normally, uh, the deadline to apply for those is uh, well, sorry, the deadline to be um, eligible for them would be March first. Uh, the way that they normally would work is that as long as your application is in by March first for uh, the study for the fall semester, uh, you would be eligible if your academics are uh, you know at an appropriate level the scholarships are competitive and they're based exclusively on academic merit so what we do is march 1st everyone has their applications in uh, and we evaluate uh, you know basically comparing your uh, your grades against everyone else in the same applicant pool as you uh, and then we'll take the top percentage of students and those students will receive scholarships so the top Depending on the amount of funding, the top so many students will get six thousand. The next wave will get four thousand four hundred, and then the next wave will get three thousand. Um, some of those scholarship decisions have gone out already. Uh, however, you know they, we will be continuing to assess them throughout the uh, throughout the summer. Um, not all the scholarship decisions have been made yet, uh, and as I said, normally we would have a deadline of March first for that. However, uh, it was just announced a couple of days ago that we are still evaluating new applicants for scholarship. Uh, so there is still potential to get them. Yeah. What about accommodation facilities for the students? Sorry? 
Accommodation facilities. Sure. Uh, so at the Grenfell campus, uh, I actually used to work with student housing. So stu uh, the, the student housing department is, is very near and dear to my heart. Um, we offer three sites of accommodations. We offer uh, the Arts and Science Residence, which is kind of our older building. Uh, it's actually inside the building with all the classrooms. Um, all of the rooms in that building are semi-private. What that means is when you walk in, you have a residence hall. You go to your door in the residence hall. Upon entry, you have a, a kind of like a, a porch or a lobby sort of area with a fridge and a bathroom. And then beyond that, there's two doors, one for you and one for your roommate. So your own individual room is perfectly private. All you share with them is your lobby and your fridge. Uh, there is a, um, a lounge on each floor or uh, like a kind of like a common area. Uh, you can go out to that lounge, you can watch TV, you can do your cooking, you can eat supper, you know, very good social space. Um, like I said, that's kind of the, the more, the, the older building, so it's a little bit more affordable. Walls are a little bit thinner, but it is still very, very nice, very, um, you know, very cozy space. Uh, the next level up from that would be the, or, or, sorry, the residence complex, uh, which is the newer residence. Uh, it was only built around, I believe, 2014. Um, the room setup is very, very similar. Uh, there's just a little bit more storage space. Uh, the walls are a little bit thicker. Uh, again, it's a newer building, so, you know, kind of a higher quality sort of space. It is a little bit more expensive there. Uh, but, again, uh, you know, uh, a very similar sort of setup with, um, in, in terms of the space. Everything is semi-private. Uh, the bathroom is a little bit bigger. You know, it, it's just overall a, a generally nicer experience. Um, and then the final space that you have is the chalet apartments. Uh, the chalet apartments are shared apartments for four students apiece. Uh, you walk in, you have a, kind of a common lobby area. You have um, a shared living room and a shared kitchen, but then four completely private bedrooms within the chalet. Uh, usually, we reserve the chalets for uh, second year and beyond, although sometimes we do allow first year students to take them given certain circumstances. Um, chalets are generally preferred by the more mature students anyway because they are a bit more private, uh, but that is uh, another option that's available. Uh, just to give a quick overview on pricing uh, from kind of most affordable to uh, the, the more expensive ones, uh, per semester, arts and science residents, the first one is uh, about uh, 1700 semester. Uh, the residence complex is 1800 per semester and then the chalets are 1950 per semester. So the, uh, multiply it by two for your uh, for your annual total. Does it include the meal plan also? Uh, no, so that doesn't include the meal plan. Uh, meal plans are um, can range between $500 and $2,000, depending on the type that you get. All the meal plans at Grenfell are offered uh, through the Grove, which is uh, our, our meal hall on campus. Um, so depending on, on the kind of meal plan you sign up for, there, there's like the, the transit meal plan, which is for people who are only planning on eating, you know, a couple times a week. Uh, those ones are about 500 and then the, you know, the full meal plan would be closer to 2000 uh, at the St. John's campus, there are residences as well. There's uh, McPherson College and Peyton College. Uh, both of those uh, are, um, you know, kind of the typical first year rooms. Uh, um, the Peyton College is uh, kind of, again, kind of like the older residence. The big difference there is that they do have uh, uh, shared rooms. So you do uh, share your space with one other person. McPherson, uh, you have a semi-private kind of like at Grenfell. Uh, and then uh, beyond that, you can go to Burton's Ponds, which is more similar to the um, to the chalets in uh, at Grenfell. Uh, now, with the meal uh, with the uh, residences in St. John's, there is a mandatory meal plan, which is uh, about two thousand four hundred per semester, I believe. Uh, I'm going to pull up the number just to make sure I'm I'm giving you the right number there. Um, but yeah, there, there it is uh, a mandatory aspect of the St. John's. Do you have the co-op option along with the courses also? So with co-op, uh, the, at the Grenfell campus, unfortunately at this time we don't offer any co-op programs. We do have uh, something called the Access Program, which is offered on a uh, annual basis to students. Uh, with that program, you can sign up to, um, there, there's no fee attached, attached to it. 
uh, but you could potentially find um, kind of a, a temporary work term experience for one semester uh, that you do in addition to your studies. So to provide a couple of examples, we've had students uh, use that to go into schools and practice with teachers. Uh, we've had students work for GPS companies. Uh, one of my favorite ones that uh, I, I heard from this program was a student from, uh, I believe, Belize. Uh, she actually wanted to work in resource management and wildlife, and her co-op partner uh, took her in a helicopter. And they went to the national park and basically they, they watched a herd of migrating caribou uh, going through the park, which I mean, like I'm, I'm jealous of that opportunity myself. I, I would have loved that opportunity. Um, but yeah, that, that would be through the Grenfell campus. Uh, the St. John's campus does have a little bit more in terms of co-op. If you look at our uh, program listing page, um, any program that has an available co-op is uh, marked off uh, by you know, a special designation. Uh, some of the more popular ones, there is a computer science program through the St. John's campus that offers co uh, an optional co-op. There's the, um, you know, most of the sciences will offer it. Uh, a couple of the arts programs do have it, although it's, it's a little bit more difficult to get them with the arts. Uh, the, big, the big ones are the sciences, so computer science, psychology, I believe the biology department, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I would have to uh, look that up to confirm 100%. Um, most of the sciences do have it. Uh, engineering, of course, mandatory co-op is, uh, is a, a required part of that program, so you would have to do a minimum of four co-op terms for engineering. Thomas, you have given a lot of information about the Memorial University. And then <laughs> this is the last question. Uh, if, you sum, if you sum up the uh, three highlights regarding the Memorial University, why students should prefer the Memorial University? What would be the three highlights? Uh, sorry, I, I missed the, the last couple of words there. Uh, what would be the three highlights you would like to mention? Why should a student come to the Memorial University? The, the best parts of Memorial University, so uh, one is the, the location, the, the culture of Newfoundland, like everything about Newfoundland as a province, I think is beautiful. The people here are amazing. There's not many of us. We, we are a very small area, uh, but we, we do have a certain reputation for being friendly, being hospitable. Uh, hospitable. Um, you know, you do a quick YouTube search about Newfoundland uh, hospitality and you will find uh, an endless parade of, of videos and people talking about like their experience in Newfoundland, it's a, you know there, there have been songs about it. It's it's just a really great place to kind of get to know people. Um, I think naturally, you know, like like I said, the location, the scenery here is beautiful. Uh, there's a lot of different opportunities for adventure tourism. Uh, small class sizes at Memorial. Uh, the cost, of course. I mean, you know, like I said, we, we do have the lowest cost in. Uh, major advantage. Cost is the major advantage. Sorry. Cost of the uh, course is the major advantage. Yeah, that's it's a huge advantage. Even at other institutions with partial scholarships, our our overall tuition is still lower, uh, and even then, it's not uh, at the at the cost of quality. The quality is still the same as you know most other institutions in the country. Uh, a big part of the reason that our tuition is so low is because of government subsidies. Uh, the government is really really interested in investing in education, uh, and over the last twenty years, they've spent uh, a, a large amount of money providing subsidies to our education and keeping that tuition costs nice and low. Thank you so much. So much. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity. This has been fantastic. <laughs> thank you.